Hello everyone, welcome to the Study Hacks Institute of GIS and Remote Sensing. Today I also try to discuss a very important topic, mainly how we can easily do for the crop yield prediction with remote sensing data. So basically it's one kind of our training program on agriculture precision. So basically in this online training program we also try to discuss lot of topic for agriculture precision. So today's session I also discuss about the crop yield prediction with remote sensing data in Google Earth Engine. So I hope after completing this tutorial you are able to do for any crop yield prediction using the Google Earth Engine platform. I will explain all of method. I hope you can easily get it. So basically in this time if you want you can use here the machine learning algorithm and you can easily predict the crop yield. As well as if you want, you can also use the linear regression and you can also predict the growth yield. So in this session, I will show you that linear regression model, how we can easily use and then predict the growth yield. But the tutorial also discuss about that machine learning model, how we can easily use it. And further, we also make the growth yield map. As well as if you want, you can also use that the deep learning model to estimate the growth yield. So further, I will discuss about the also about the deep learning. To get all of those things, simply join, keep in touch with my YouTube channel. Then you can easily get all of those things. So today's session we discuss about the linear regression, and then how we can really easily use the linear regression model to predict the crop yield. So first of all, we have to know about that what is the crop yield data in agriculture. So basically crop yield prediction refers to the estimate of the amount of the produce that a particular agriculture parcel or region is expected to yield during a given a green season. So basically it's one kind of information, the amount of the crop yield produced by the farmer or farmer group. It includes the amount of the group harvested per hectare land. This can be measured in ton or any other unit we can easily measure depending on the crop. So it's also provide the uh, information about the total amount of the crop. And here you can see basically in this time we can easily find out that growing season basically crop yield prediction. It refers to the estimate of the amount of the product or crop in that particular growing season. From the NDVI time series chart of our crop plan we can easily identify about that three phase one is the vegetative phase another is the reproductive phase another is that repanning phase so basically this reproductive phase is also called about the growing season in this time we find out the peak of ndvi value highest peak of the ndvi value so these things we can consider as the reproductive phase or growing season and when we do part the crop yield prediction basically we select this time period for that uh, estimating the amount of the produce that a particular agriculture um, in the yield to during a given a growing season. So it's very important about that. First of all, we have to find out that growing season. We can easily make the NDVI chart and further we can easily find out the growing season uh, from what time series chart. So in this time we can easily find out the three phase. One phase is the vegetative phase, another is the reproductive phase, another is the repanning phase. And what is growth yield prediction? Basically, crop yield prediction is the process of estimating the potential of uh, expected yield of a specific crop for a given area and a growing season. So it's very important about the growing season. First of all, we have to know about that how we can easily make find out the growing season from our NDVI map on in our crop plan. And it involves the analyzing the various factors such as weather conditions, soil characteristics, crop genetics and management the practice to make the informed uh, pr uh, prediction about the likely harvest. So all of uh, parameters is also important for that uh, crop yield prediction. Further, I also discuss about the more about the other prime uh, climate condition or weather condition such as rainfall, temperature, soil characteristics, then you can also get that more better map. So in this tutorial, I'll just only focus on the NDVI. So based on the NDVI, I try to find out what is the condition of the crop yield. Okay, but, but if you want, you can also add, add the more parameters such as different types of weather condition or soil condition or soil characteristics, crop genetics. So this type of data we are also including in our crop uh, yield prediction model and further we can also make that more better crop yield prediction. But in this session, I just talk about the NDVI. 
for the next tutorial to discuss about that how can easily add the more climatic data or soil data or crop genetics data so this type of things how we can easily add and further we also predict the crop yield so let's go also you can say about that it's also a, about the linear regression linear regression model basically it's one kind of y equal to mx plus c this is our linear regression equation so using this equation we are just find uh, find out the crop yield so here you can see this is show about the yield equal to mx plus c so here mainly m is that uh, our solve value and mx mainly it's our ndvi value and c mainly it's our interceptive value so basically in this time i based only for the ndvi and and predict the crop yield so that's why i just consider for the ndvi further when i work for that more parameters such as different types of climate data soil data crop genetic data then we have to apply the multi regression model then you can easily get that more uh, accurate predict of the yield so in this time we can get this type of things here you can see one kind of example it show about that yield equal to 2.7 here 2.7 is our solve value slope value we can get from here and then further ndvi is mainly it's our x value which is mainly independent and y uh, yield is the y y is mainly dependent variable and also you can see plus c c mainly 0.14 it's our intercept uh, intercept value we find out from here and further here we find out the 0.7 it's our ndvi value and when i find out the 0.7 what's the yield how many yield i find out the 2.03 ton okay we find out the uh, yield value also 2.03 ton so this is one kind of random data so basically we can easily get the crop yield historical data we can easily find out from the different sources so we can easily use the different types of historical crop yield data for that this type of data we are also consider in our model and then we can easily make that linear regression model and create this type of prediction for that making the different types of prediction okay but when you want to add the more parameters such as weather data climate data soil characteristics data or any crop uh, genetics data then we have to apply the multi linear regression then we can also get the more better crop yield prediction so now let's check about the code i will explain all of those things one by one so here you can see this is our um, map for the crop yield prediction we can easily find out that this type of red color identify about that there is no crop it show it can one kind of barren land or water body or other things but it not about the crop land so basically you can find out this type of green color and yellow color is show about that crop land we can see about the lesion about that so crop yield ton per hectare unit we calculate this type of things in here so you can get this type of map so basically it's generate from that <coughs> ndvi okay so in this time we predict the crop yield depend on the ndvi because uh, uh, if you want you can also add the more parameter for that i also discuss about that in this time i just show you that how we can easily use it for that and also you can see about that uh, this is our uh, study area so this is our crop land study area we select for that and further we are just um, put here our satellite imagery so in this time i use here the sentinel 2 satellite imagery so from the sentinel to satellite imagery we can get that um 10 into 10 100 meter square area we can easily find out what is the condition for the crop land uh yield prediction we can easily get it from here and after that we just create that ndvi map so we can get this type of ndvi map and then using the linear regression you can get predict for our uh, crop yield prediction okay. so basically here you can see about that all of the chart we create in here so basically uh here you can see this is the code about that first of all you simply import your study area and then further filter your uh image collection so in this time i just would use here the sentinel 2 image collection and further i create the ndvi for my study area and then you can see this is the ndvi time series chart so from this time series chart we can easily find out that the vegetative phase also reproductive phase and uh, repainting phase we can easily find out so basically this phase it's called the repeat um reprodu reproductive phase okay or growing phase you can see june 19 and up we can see about that uh we can find out uh this phase uh this time it show about that uh september 2 so this is our uh, growing phase you can simply select your growing phase and further you try to make the profile or profile prediction in the growing season for the specific crop land so this is the time period we can simply put in here so in this time i put the time period look like that here you can see so it's uh, 20 uh, 23 20 march 
from uh, 7 October for this time and further we also make this NDVI time three chart and we can get the sample data so basically you can see this is our sample data this sample data it's one kind of historical data for this study area so you can easily collect the uh, sample data for the different sources okay so you can see this is the sample data basically this in the sample data you can find out the two things one is that NDVI and also is about that yield data so 0 0.4 what is the yield data uh, how much ton you can see about the another is that uh, it should about the 0 0.5 ndv value then i can get that how much ton for yield 1.5 so it's one kind of our data and using this data we can create the y equal to mx plus c so here m value mainly slope we find out the 2.699 and we can find out that c value which is the intercept value here you can see intercept value mainly c value 0 0.14 so this is our intercept value and further we also calculate about the predicted uh, yield statistic value we can get we can get that it calculated that per square area mainly per square area we find out that 1.01 ton okay, we can find out this uh, and if can you also calculate the hectare unit that is no problem in this time it show about that per hectare area how much um, ton uh, crop yield we find out that 1.01 average 1.01 ton and further we also try to calculate make this type of you can see based on the ndvi what is the predict uh, of the yield we can get this type of linear regression chart so from this chart we can easily get it all of uh, predicted value and if you want you can also use it to predict for other future uh, yield prediction but in this time we are just consider only for the one factor only for the ndvi but when you want to add the more factors such as uh, temperature data then uh, climate data weather condition data as well also crop genetic data so this type or soil pro, uh, properties or soil characteristics data then we also get the more better crop yield prediction map so in this time i will show you that only for the ndvi but further if you want you can also get uh, the, this type of other layer you can also add and also apply this type of things so if you have any question or any doubt you can simply contact with me and if you want to join this live training program on the agriculture precision then you can simply contact in my whatsapp number also contact in my email then you can easily get all of information and you can easily join my online training program only for the agriculture precision so in in agriculture precision we also try to describe uh, all of those things for the agriculture in modern technology how we can easily use the gis and remote sensing in the agriculture and further we can do for the different types of analysis such as crop yield prediction growth monitoring as well as also we can do for that uh, different types of things we can easily do in the gis and remote sensing in the modern technology you can get all of those things in my uh, website you can easily get all of those upcoming online training program when it will be start or if you want you can also join my some private training program you can see all of list in here i also added this uh, website link in my video description you can easily find out and then you can easily uh, check all of details for our upcoming online training program and then you can easily join okay so as well as if you want to join my upcoming online training program you can see this is the one kind of complete online training on google earth engine for remote sensing and gis analysis for beginners to advanced level so this class will be start from the 19 july okay now recently the open if you want to join this online training program then you can easily learn all of those things you can also check the course syllabus from here you can see so you can easily get all of course syllabus so basically it's total 28 hours online training program and uh, when you want to join this online training program you can get a lot of benefits such as you can get that course e certificate you can easily verify this course certificate from our website as well as you can also get all of materials mainly slide pdf you can get all of practice code okay and if you miss any uh, live session you can easily get the recorded class and you can also get the lifetime teaching support it's very important as a beginner because when you want to learn the google earth engine platform you face a lot of problems so that's why you need the continuous support so that's why we're also providing the lifetime testing support okay so and when you want to complete all of assignment you can easily get the course certificate and this course certificate you can simply verify from our website you can easily get that verify from our website you can get this type of certificate after you can easily get the verification also you can download the e-certificate from our website so this is the process for getting the uh, certificate from our website and uh, when you complete all of uh, assignment you can easily get it and you can easily get it all of information from our website um, and you can also get that upcoming training session when you will be start we can get all of information about the upcoming training 
So you'll check all of those things. And if you want to join our uh, online training program, simply contact and then you can easily get that for better and nailing uh, training support. Okay. So today is no more. Thank you for watching that. Stay happy, stay safe.